my buddy, my wingman, my sugar daddy. vision for the future, a world inhabited by flying cars, laser beams, spacesuits, and robots that lived in harmony with human beings. Today, it seems those dreams are just a distant memory, which leaves the question, where are the relics of the future that we thought we were heading towards? Where is that dead future now? I'm ready. Every year for my birthday, I throw a big birthday party and that involves renting a house. So I do it through websites and they ended up directing me to come all the way out here to the desert. To this place, Diamond View Summit. So what ended up happening is as I was getting the tour, I make a left around the corner. I see a fucking robot. I'm like, what is this? And David Leventhal, the owner of this house, known to his friends as Double Black Diamond Dave, says, oh, that's Casanova the party robot. And I say, Casanova the what? I'm David Leventhal, AKA Double Black Diamond Dave, and this is Casanova. In the 1980s, Hollywood's most infamous party robot, Casanova, had captured the imagination of the city finally affirming that the fantasy of a techno-integrated society was becoming real. Tinseltown swept this robot and his teenage owner from a garage in the valley to make them the center of the party. When I first got the idea for the robot, I was 20 years old, and I was at the Sherman Oaks Galleria when I saw another robot. A robot with full remote control and programmable memory. Ready? All this robot did was move around and talk, but I couldn't get the idea out of my head. I loved how much attention this robot was getting, and I said to myself, that's a winner, but it needs to be spruced up. It needs to be more party oriented. And that was the spawn of the idea. So I spent the next month contemplating and designing how this could work. Uh, I spent a lot of time thinking about technology, especially as it applies to cybernetics, the Terminator, the Six Million Dollar Man, any movie about robots I pay particular close attention to. Now keep in mind, this is a home-built robot. I didn't have a manufacturing facility. I didn't have a professional engineering degree. I didn't have professional tooling. I created this robot just with the basic tools and materials that you get at a hardware store or a hobby shop. In the 80s, was there a sense that anything was possible, that this was going to be the future? In the mid-1980s, computers were becoming available and people's expectations of technology were just starting to accelerate and the robot was part of that. People had a sense of amazement and optimism that anything was possible. Once you'd assembled this robot, you began to think of how to market it. What's the furthest you went to get publicity for this robot? Uh, when he got onto the people's court. He was on the people's court? This is the plaintiff, David Leventhal, owner of Casanova Robots. He claims that Casanova, the priceless six-foot-tall robot he built himself, was horribly abused at the defendant's party, and he's furious that some of the man's drunken guests thought it was funny to steal one of its arms. I filed a lawsuit against one of my best friends, all of designed just to bait the producers of the People's Court into calling me. About 10 days after I filed the complaint, they called me and introduced themselves and said, would you like to have your dispute heard on the people's court? I showed up in a suit and my friend, he showed up in a Hawaiian shirt. Do you have any idea why someone would want to take the arm of a robot? 
I could not keep a straight face and I'm looking straight down because I just can't, I can barely contain myself laughing. He ended up winning the case. There's no legal basis for you to win this lawsuit. Judgment is for the defendant. How do you feel? Clearly a wrong decision. Um, I think. <laughs> okay. Good luck. It worked like a charm and uh, hit the ground running with the robot from that point forward. I found places in the city where I could bring the robot out in public on my lunch hour and have him pass out his own brochures. I'd bring him down to the corner of Flower and Six, Rodeo Drive. By the time I would get back home, there'd be four or five calls on my answering machine. I mean, this is the legendary 80s Los Angeles party scene. And you were a law student, and you're at red carpet Hollywood events. I mean, what did it feel like to be part of this, even through the robot, to have a proxy in this scene that so many people would kill to get into? Well, the 80s was a fantastic time to be coming of age in Los Angeles, because there were so many parties. Sure. Casanova opened up the door to get the two of us into hundreds of red carpet events that without the robot I would have never been involved in. I remember events with Sylvester Stallone, Rod Stewart, Charlton Heston, Herbie Hancock, George Takai, and Cindy Crawford when she was with MTV before she was well known. And she was just leaning into the robot and hugging him. What did having half of your personality being silent and the other half being the life of the party feel like? It was actually enjoyable from the standpoint of, in my real life, I was a relatively mild-mannered reporter, so to speak, going to college. Meanwhile, on Saturday nights, I was Casanova. The robot was my alter ego. He was the evil David Leventhal. He could be the biggest flirt and the most sarcastic asshole that the real David Leventhal wanted to be but couldn't get out any other way. Things that you wouldn't dream of saying directly to someone's face were absolutely hysterical when coming from the robot. Yeah, I think I need a cigarette. I really lived a, a schizophrenic life for about 15 years doing this. Describe the transition from the 80s into the 90s. Well, as we got into the 90s, I finished law school and uh, the robot started getting a little outdated. He just looked a little boxy and he was just a little worn out, like an old gigolo. And people's expectations and perceptions and use of technology had accelerated beyond the robot. You're telling me people managed to get tired of the future. This is an impossible piece of technology. I keep in mind, people always wanted something different for their party. And I think that after hundreds and hundreds of parties, it was time for something new but I have a different life now and it's, it's just part of my past and it's a, a pleasant era, but I do have very peculiar dreams about the robot breaking down, falling apart, or generally misbehaving as he always did in the 80s. But the future can only last so long before it becomes yesterday, and the era of the robot party host never quite materialized the way Double Black Diamond Dave thought it would. Casanova, like so many other movers and shakers from the 1980s, is now just another forgotten legend. He watches the world go by from here. Mm -hmm.